What's going on, guys? All right. It's happened. It's the 80 volt cobalt blade on the weed eater. Um, I've been looking for this for a long time. They don't have one, they don't exist. I have used parts from a cheap old skill saw. Um, you might have a burn up skill saw, but you're only going to need one part off this. But you can make a part. This is just something I did, like throwing it together just to see if I could do it. Now, here is the weed eater part thing that goes in here. And yeah. And break string like crazy. And and honestly, I kind of think the reason why these weed eaters break string so bad is because of the torque. Because unlike a, a regular weed eater, they have a shaft. This is a motor. Now, they're not all like this. But this particular one, this is straight up a motor. A brushless motor at the end of this. So... When it spins up, it's like, when this spins up, it's like, sounds like a helicopter. And when you let off, it still spins. It just keeps spinning. Now, this is the wrong kind of blade. I know that's what you're saying. But this is just to test it. I'm going to order a 10-inch, like, actual weed eater blade. Now, I was going to put this one on there, too, but I didn't. So, but I'm just going to kind of take it apart and work backwards and explain what I did. So it's slotted in here, so you need yourself a screwdriver. I got a ratcheting one. And the reason why this works at all is because Cobalt made something where you could make this work. Okay. Now you see, that's loose. That doesn't fit on there. So you're like, how'd that work? This. I don't know if you can see that or not. But this comes out of this part right here of the weed eater. It just slips in, just like this. Just put it in, push it in like that, and it just comes out. It's really loose, actually. And that is tapered. Probably too close to camera. I don't know if you can see it, but that's tapered. And it will taper in to the hole and lock it down. So the weed eater basically comes, you take this nut, pull it out, flip it over, because it's normally supposed to clamp like that. You flip it over, and it will locate. It will locate in. And the other thing that I had to have was this right here. And what I did, oh no, I don't need to lose those. Okay. No, get out of there. Oh no! Anyways, oh here we go. This will work. Well, I can't reach them. I dropped one of my little rubber grommets in there. So I'm grab my iFix a kit and get it out real quick. Alright, use the clamp tweezers. Okay, so these two parts, this part right here, it goes in there and it rides on the bearing. There's a bearing in there and you can see the motor in there. So that rides on the bearing. And then this would normally screw down like that and castle like that. So you could technically squeeze this, squeeze a blade in between that like that. And... You could get it tied enough that it wouldn't move, but I just prefer the locating, that tapered thing locates it better. But if you flip it over, it, it it's too short. The threads don't come down far enough. So you have to have something like this. This come off a circular saw, like a cheap one, like a, a hyper tough from Walmart. And what I did was I put it on there like that, and that's loose, but I took these little bits of garden hose gasket and I just squeezed them in on the sides like that just flip it around 
And the idea is this is the same kind of rubber on both sides. So it's going to locate it. You see what I'm saying? Like it's going to be equal pressure on both sides. So it makes a spacer that's not going to move. And once you put the blade on and put this on, see, you just shimmy it around, finds a place, and it's there. It's not coming off. Just tested it. Cuts like, whoa. Cuts really good, even with this on here. And this is like a paneling blade. I just put the one with more teeth on it because I know skill saw blades, like no teeth skill saw blades like this is not for cutting brush and it will break. So I use this. It figured it would be better. It, it does work really well. I mean, it freaking sounds like a helicopter when it spins up. I mean, it really does. I want to kind of turn it on and show you, but kind of in my bedroom and I don't want to do that in my bedroom. Even though I already did it, I got kids running around here, so I don't want to kill anybody. But there, it works. There are no videos on this. I looked till I was blue in the freaking face. There's nobody that did a video about this. And I had this part off, off the Hyper Tough Circular Saw, but you don't need this part. You really don't need this part. I just had it. Because the circular saw I had, like the guard broke on it and it was, it kept kicking back on me. So one day I was just like, you know what? I'm taking this thing apart and see if I can use, actually I did take it apart to see if I can use the parts off of it for a, for this, for a thing like this. But I never got to where I took it apart all the way until today. I mean, I took it apart and put this together in this length of time. And it's all because... Cobalt has that tapered nut. That tapered nut is what allows you to do this. But that is how you put a blade on a Cobalt 80 volt from Lowe's. Now, disclaimer, don't do this. This is very dangerous. And I, I went outside and used this a little bit. You do have to take the guard off. This gets completely in your way when you're trying to use this. So I haven't taken the guard off yet. I'm going to. When I seriously start using this. Um, but I'm I'm not really seriously using it yet. Like I said, I do want to see about getting a different blade. But, you know, this is an old blade that I've had kicking around for a while. I mean, there's not even any color left on it. Um, I might just go full bore with this. I don't know. But, anyways, that's how you do it. That's the parts. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can say slot it in there use a screwdriver to hold back up and it's it's a nut it's straight up a nut and take pliers and take it off anyways thanks for watching guys